Hello and welcome along to part 2 of how to design your own layout and timetables using the Railway Operations Simulator which you can find at this website. There you go, advert over. This is the layout as it stood at the end of the first video and in this video we're going to look at uh, inserting signals, linking the track all together and telling the program which directions trains are expected to run on each piece of track. So first of all we're going to uh, enter the signals these are the various icons, the various types of signals that we can put in and that one is the signals for going from left to right so we right click on a square to remove a piece of track and then left click to insert the signal that signal will, will protect the entry point A we'll put another one in there for this junction we'll then put another one in here assuming we're looking at trains that are going straight along the main line we'll do another one there to protect the station a station starter and then finally one for trains that are disappearing off the layout. We'll go back in the other direction just for the straight double track at the moment. We'll put one in here to protect the entry, we'll protect the station, we'll do a station starter, there's a fairly long piece of track there, we'll do one there, we'll put a signal in there for that junction and then we can have one that clears for the junction and also uh, allows trains to disappear off the track. So that's the main lines done. Now we have to worry about the terminus. Remember that trains are coming in from entry A, they're going to the terminus, they're then reversing and the way we're going to set this up is that they can then go in one of two directions to come back. They can either carry on back down this piece of track across this crossover and disappear off that way or they can come out of here, go down there underneath the underpass, come along here and then join the uh, main line track to disappear at exit B there. So, first of all, we need some track, some signals that are for that piece of track. So that train passing that signal will clear that. We'll uh, go back to straight for this particular junction. We don't need any more signals because we can only have one train in that uh, piece of track because it's single line. Coming back, we'll do a station starter. Well then, oh, see I've done a, made a mistake, <laughs> we need one at a diagonal, there you go, easy to make a mistake, easy to get rid of it, just right click and do one there. We'll also put in a signal in there. So now we've got a station starter and we need one more for there and we'll have and that's the wrong track again <laughs> and we'll put one in there there you go I think that's about all the signals that we're going to need probably, it's probably too many but uh, it doesn't matter how many you put in you can always take them out and put them back in again uh, but everything should be protected uh, and we can have more than two or three trains running on this particular layout remember in fact it's a golden rule the more signals you have the more trains you can have on the layout but of course they'll be sitting there waiting for signals to clear for those in front Right, so that's the signals linked in. Now we need to link the track. What does that mean? Well, it's fairly straightforward. These are the three icons. They're visual clues, if you like, to let you know what you need to do for the uh, layout to operate properly. That icon has got a green tick. It means that all locations are named. If I hadn't named all the locations, it would have a red cross. Similarly, that icon uh, refers to gaps. We've only got one gap, which was that over there we did connect it up in video number one so that's got a green tick this has got a red cross which means that the track isn't linked properly yet how do we do that very simple we just click on there it says successful completion and now all the track is linked and we've got three green crosses we'll then save the railway and go like that now one thing I did forget to mention when we were putting the signals in it doesn't matter now but um, when you insert your signals you can choose on this uh, particular icon the types of signals that you want so as you can see I've set up this layout with three aspect signals that's a green one yellow and a red you can have a simple red or green a shunt type signal or you can have red two, uh, two ambers and a green I set this up uh, for red amber green it's always a good idea to think about the type of signals that you want before you start placing them in otherwise you've got to delete all the signals that you put in and to change them back you can't change them all in one go 
So the signals are all put in, we save the program, we're going to exit build mode and finally for this video we're going to set preferred directions which is into mode and click on that option there. Now the reason we're doing this is that when we come to operate the railway we, we want to be able to set up automatic pieces of track where signals change automatically. If you've already run the program you'll know that's the blue option and for the program to be able to do that it needs to know the directions that trains are expected to travel along each individual piece of track. If you leave it just as it sits at the moment although the, op the railway will operate the only type of signalling or routing that you can do uh, when you come to operations are the red signaller controlled junctions which means that every time a train clears one signal you'll have to manually reset it again for the next train. So we're going to set up directions. It's all fairly straightforward. You just left click on one point and then left click on the next point. You can see the arrows already have appeared on the line. It says that the preferred direction has been added. You click on A and it turns into red. So now we know that trains can go along this piece of track in this direction. Similarly, for that direction there. Now what we also need to set up of course is trains that can come in from entry A and go to the terminus. So we click on there and we click on there. The program knows that trains are going to use this junction and go up there. Click on OK. Now this is where it gets clever and slightly more complicated. We now need to tell the program that trains can travel from terminus, go back to exit B either along here or branch off and go down there. So what we do is we click on there. Now instead of going all the way to exit B, although the program will, will find a way, it's best when you've got alternative routes to click halfway through the route. So we'll click there and then we'll click to exit B. So the program knows that trains can go in this direction. Also you'll notice that because we'd already set the track up from here to here for trains to go in this direction, now that we've told it that trains can go in this direction as well, the track has turned green, which a quick look at the key will tell you means that that track is now set as bi-directional. The last piece of track we need to tell the program about is from the terminus. If I make sure the click, there we go, terminus. Now it's going to come down here. Now the only possible way of getting to B is down here, across here to there. We click OK and it's done. Save the program and that as far as the layer is concerned is just about it. In part 3 we'll look at compiling a timetable which actually will enable us to put trains on to this layout and operate it.